I'm going to try and pack 15 semesters into one hour. So I'm going to, honestly, um, I'm going to give it all away. I'm going to turn my timer on because if I don't, I will stay up here all morning. Um, okay, so this is me. Um, be forewarned already, this is PG-13. Um, not only that, if I can get the clicker to work, clicker, okay, well, I'll, um, I'm going to go at a breakneck pace. Um, if you write anything down, write cochistudios.com forward slash ji conference 2014.pdf. Everything I go through, everything I put here is already up there on, um, on the website. I'm going to kind of open um, the attic. Um, I teach uh, visual journalism, among other things, at UC Berkeley. And just to put this into perspective, um, it is now required that all students at UC Berkeley in the journalism program take at least one semester of visual journalism before they graduate. It is now a required course at UC Berkeley. Um, and so I'm going to share with you um, everything um, that I put into my courses. Um, it's going to be good, bad, ugly. I'm going to give you all the toys I play with. It's going to uh, kind of be like watching um, all the Sopranos um, as fast as you can in a row, kind of a Netflix binge, right? Um, I'm not a, a professor per se. I am an assistant professor, but I started out as a journalist, as most of you know. I've seen a lot of change in the industry, as indicated here by my uh, last business card at the Mercury News. In fact, things got so bad, they misspelled Mercury News, uh, and it was Mercury New, and they wouldn't pay for new cards, so I had to write the S on all of them, right? Uh, before I left, um, I was the first uh, director of multimedia there, um, but they were so afraid to put multimedia on the card because they didn't know what it is um, that they left it off and just called me the deputy director of photography. Um, in putting presentations together, I always go back to this card, my very first business card when I was 16 years old, and I love, I love what they called me. They called me a memories specialist, and actually that's what I like to um, in part to my students in terms of um, what we need to be thinking about. We need to be thinking wider and larger than particular labels of I'm a reporter, I'm a photographer, I'm a this, I'm a that. And I'm going to try and get to some of that. So let's do just a quick history of who I am. All right? Okay. Now I work here, right? And in driving in, I saw a lot of signs. You guys may have seen them too right off the highway. This is one of them. This was another one. Right, the signs are, they're, they're pretty much everywhere, right? Okay, and as to not offend, you can go to churchsigngenerator.com and put anything you want on a church sign, um, right? Um, journalism, doom, blah, blah, blah. Every night uh, before class, every time before I give a presentation, I get really nervous and really scared, and I really panic. I also am the guy that does the presentations like the night before. So this is usually the scene you'll see, which is me with my feet up, watching some movie in a hotel room or at my home, putting my presentation together, um, looking for random um, inspiration from movies. Sometimes I panic that I won't be inspiring enough. And so sometimes the voices from the film start speaking to me. And I'm like, oh, gosh, can't I just, can't I just say it like Al Pacino is saying it? Can't I just say it? And one night before a conference, I decided, you know what? If I don't wake up or I just have a panic attack, I'm just going to put together a little video to inspire. That way I can just show it and not have to say anything. So while this isn't one of those times I'm feeling pretty good, I'm still going to show that because I think there's some inspiration in this next little video. You know, things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. And we can stay here, get the shit kicked out of us. I will not go down that way. I choose to fight back. I choose to rise, not fall. I choose to live, not die. And I know, I know that what's within me is also within you. We can fight our way back into the light. We can climb out of hell. Are you getting my point, people? Yes. Is it beginning to sink in? Yes. 
We sink, we swim, we rise, we fall, we meet our fate together. So in all of those, I was hearing a message about journalism, right? The wider picture of journalism, not just visual journalism. And I thought to myself, things are bad, right? And we can stay here, right? But I will not go down that way. And I don't think you will either, right? I choose to fight back, right? I choose to rise, not fall. Right? And I know that what's within me is also within you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be where you are today. And we can climb out of this hell, out of this negativity, out of this weight that we all sometimes feel in the industry that we choose. Right? And we meet our fate together. That's one of the reasons I love this conference so much, and I love being here so much, and I love teaching and being in a room like this is because this isn't about me anymore. It's about us. And so I want to give away everything that I have in hopes that, one, I will deplete my reserves, so I'll have to find more stuff, um, but also that we can open a dialogue and begin to share, right? So I want to think more about big picture stuff. So let's define quickly, in a sense, visual journalism. Even though I like to break the script and everybody says, this is what your speech is going to be, usually the night before, as you can see, a big Al Pacino fan, too much Al Pacino. I usually break the script and go off in, in, in other directions. But what, what is visual journalism? This is the first thing I think is important. It's the first thing I impart to my students. In fact, they probably imparted it to me first, and then I regurgitated it back to them. They know this. We don't. And we don't, I don't think we often teach from this perspective, that the internet is not a dumping ground created for other platforms, right? The web, the internet, is a new creative platform. I really have only one message here beyond sharing some of the exercises um, and assignments that I give students and taking a little survey of visual journalism. And it's coming up a little later, but I'll, I'll allude to it now, is that we have a very small opportunity right now while the internet is still a baby, and it is a baby. We forget that. It has not been around for a long time. It hasn't matured enough to change the way things are done, presented, seen on this new creative platform, right? So that's what I like. It's not a single canvas anymore. It's not about the desktop. It's not even about mobile. It's about all of these devices oftentimes at once. And most of you, that freaks you out. It freaks me out, but it doesn't freak out my 16-year-old daughter, who's got her headphones on, who's got her uh, mobile phone here, who's got her desktop here, and who sometimes takes my Google Glasses just to have fun and see what it's all about. Right? Not a problem for them. It's not a single canvas, and we have to stop thinking about how we present all of our information. Right. Um, I love this quote from Bob. We've entered a new phase where I know all, all the writers, they all get, get all uptight, you know, oh, the written word, the written word. I fight that battle at Berkeley all the time. But there's no question that we're entering this image sphere. Um, my daughter, I, I look, I'm a photographer. I know photography. I know the power of visuals. And yet, on a five-minute drive to work, she is just constantly doing this and doing this. And I'm like, what are you doing? Well, I'm Snapchatting. And there's no typing going on. I'm like, but you don't look any different than you did 30 seconds ago. And you just keep taking pictures and taking pictures. And they're using these tools to visually communicate, often without words. And we have to think about that. We also have to look back that far, because those are the people, those are the audiences for our students and for ourselves that continue to practice. Right? My daughter is a future consumer of news. Don't create visual journalism for us in the room. Right? We need to start thinking about creating visual journalism for the next generation of consumers. Right? So in just one minute, some of you, this isn't news to any of you. Right? Uh, uh, 200,000 photos posted to Facebook. Uh, 500,000 likes on Instagram. Um, we know, we know the statistics and numbers are there in terms of what visual journalism brings in terms of engagement, right? These are just some of the headlines that I copied while I was on the plane looking for things to read, right? Millennials watching video on tablets. Again, none of this is news. Yahoo uh, looking to f uh, buy a uh, news distribution channel. Mobile uh, video viewing increased 700%. 
Um, mobile video, oh, same one. Um, traditional media is still great if you're selling video, right? Washington Post, video, video, video in 2004. It's not all about video, and it's also not new, right? I mean, this, which I actually own one, I went on eBay and, and had to buy one, because this is really, the, this is like something from the 70s. It's 3D, it's interactive, and if you press the button on the back, you get sound. I mean, that is visual interactive journalism well before the web. So this stuff isn't new, right? We're taking and learning from all of the mediums and things that came before it, but we have the opportunity to create something new. What that new is, I don't know. What it looks like, I don't know. My charge is that we must experiment, right? We have no idea what new piece of technology might launch that can, that can and will change everything, right? Um, it's better to have a bigger purpose and firm beliefs than it is to have a plan. These are the first few slides I, I show my students. And ultimately, this is what I believe. It's the creative eye. That's what survives all technological revolutions, right? That's what we should care about. That's what we should hone. That's what we must get our students to start thinking about, right? And the key word there is creative. And another word that I like to think about and bring in, artistry. You never hear the words art and creativity in a newsroom. I never did in 25 years. Right? If I ever brought anything that remotely didn't look like traditional journalism, the old dudes with their green visors on the copy desk would, this artsy fartsy, blah, blah, right? It was just not accepted. And we need to cultivate that. We need to bring that back. We need to bring it into the newsroom, right? The elements of good storytelling are eternal. That's what's going to survive. We know that, right? Um, this is interesting, right? R part of the PG-13. Recently, photography has become as widely practiced an amusement as sex and dancing, right? Most of us would agree. That was written in 1973, right? Here's an, another li little quick survey. There's St. Peter's Square in 2005, and there it is in 2013, right? The idea of the proliferation of visual tools and devices to communicate. The number of photos taken every year, right? The number of photos taken every year now, right? And analog dropping off. Again, not news to any of us, right? 14 million images in the Library of Congress, 500 million Instagram, and these statistics are old. Flickr has 6 billion, and Facebook, right, 170 billion. This is a, a, an artist printed out every picture uploaded to Flickr in one day, and it fills rooms of a gallery. You can go swim, literally, in pictures, right? So there's no question, right? Instagram clearly has brought all of this visual communication, this instant um, gratification, if you will, this instant form of visual communication to the forefront, right? We think that Bitcoin is the currency of the future. I think that visual communication is the currency of the future. I think that videos, information, graphics, data, creative ways of presenting a beautiful marriage of images and words together, together are, are the future of journalism. I'm going to show you some more classic examples of what I think what it is. This is a beautiful, beautiful visualization. This is visual journalism about um, drone strikes. So you get to see every drone strike. And you get they represent each person down at the bottom. And you can scroll and you can dig into the statistics in terms of who was killed with drone strikes. We've got Planet Money makes a t-shirt. Wonderful, wonderful example of video breaking out of the box. It wasn't just a video. And not only that, the videos were small and they were quick and they really, really respected the viewer's time and attention. If you want a great example to show students of brevity, of of, of, of great storytelling in a compact form, show them this piece. And I'll show just a little bit of everything here. We wanted to tell the story of our clothes the way the vast majority of our clothes are actually made. Because behind all of our clothes, behind this shirt, there is an entire world. And once you see that world, you realize there's nothing ordinary about a simple t-shirt. 
even the backstory to how that story came about. And Kickstarter is absolutely amazing how they leveraged audience and storytelling to bring a new kind of narrative to the internet. Um, and I highly encourage you, they're gonna hate me for saying this, but we, we brought, we Skyped them into class and um, the folks that put this together are absolutely wonderful and enlightening. I would encourage you, as I know most of you all are already doing, bringing in the professionals that are creating some of this amazing work into your classes. Um, the idea of motion graphics being an absolutely uh, wonderful and, and new South way American to present information Mexico on the web within the our narrative. In Central right? America, a the kilogram New York of Times. cocaine. So much so that we now teach After Effects. I teach Southern After Mexico, Effects courses in animation and higher and so higher that our students can go out into the world and present these visual explainers, right? That's what they are. And they're, they're very, have become very, very uh, important, big part of visual journalism, right? Some of the ways that we're cutting together video and creating these collages and these new um, ways of storytelling, even within the box of visual journalism video are amazing. If you don't know the work of the Mer Mercandantes, they used to be called Every Nun. They're an amazing uh, team of filmmakers who are really, really turning up the volume in terms of what can be um, put together and received on the web in terms of a message. This is one of their pieces called Words. It takes a little bit of time to get into, but once you Here's get it, very it's very delightful. Here, the gym is pinching. Play ball! a beautiful, beautiful juxtaposition of images, right? A new way of storytelling that oftentimes um, leaves the, the talent, the reporter, out of the picture and allows the subjects and their words and actions to be front and center. Right? Center for Investigative Reporting, doing some amazing things with motion graphics and animation. Being in the box as a teenager, it took a toll on me mentally. Why would you want to put a kid through this? Absolutely stunning presentation when you have this video or this audio, this powerful audio narrative to bring animation to the table. Um, some of the animation and information graphics melded together from the New York Times are really wonderful. I love this uh, Mariano Rivera. Um, and the pitch's just ultimate location. Creativity the can be faced with guessing at these outcomes. Here are the cutters to left-handers. Here are the cutters to right-handers. And fastballs to right-handers. He throws almost no fastballs to lefties. As this map of his 2009 pitches shows, this is the kind of creative thinking and creative presentation that I'm trying to prepare my students for, that I think um, the world deserves in terms of rich, deep storytelling, and that the market is beginning to demand. Right? There's a few more. Uh, the Guardian's Firestorm is absolutely a wonderful meld of interaction and video and words and text all together in a way that the viewer can consume at their own pace. It was Friday morning. All right, so this is, this is something that somebody, I believe it's trademarked the term, but it's a term I absolutely love, this idea of scrolling telling, all of this kind of scroll things that happen. Um, this is also, you'll notice that this isn't from a traditional um, news organization. One of the things I do to my students all the time is they cannot 
they have to go um, at least half the semester not consuming visual journalism from traditional media. They can't because all we tend to do is look at ourselves and look at what the New York Times is doing and copy that. And yet what those people are doing is they're looking at places like Pitchfork and The Verge and uh, artists like Jonathan Harris who are creating some real masterpieces of visual journalism uh, of, and, and, and then people at the New York Times and others are being inspired by that and using that, and I, and I teach my students to do the same thing, to find inspiration not in the places you would traditionally look, but in other places, right? I think this is a wonderfully creative um, myth. Imagine for a moment that you have a habit that you really want to change. Let's say, for instance, you go up to the cafeteria every afternoon and you eat a chocolate chip cookie. This habit has caused you to gain a little bit of weight. In fact, this habit has caused you to gain exactly eight pounds and your wife has started making some pointed comments. And when I say you, what I really mean is me, because this is a habit that I had that I just couldn't kick. Right, wonderfully delightful. Um, you, you would hardly ever see that kind of presentation within the traditional platform, and what the web has allowed us to do is play with all these forms in a wonderfully, wonderfully um, creative way. Again, some of the best scrolly telling you know where this site is? I encourage you to look at Apple's site. They're advertisements for the iPad, but what they're doing um, is absolutely beautiful and astounding way that they're mixing text and information graphics. Um, also, they, they just did one on concussions that was absolutely wonderful. Um, so looking outside of the industry for some of these things. Most everybody here, I'm sure, is seeing um, uh, the Guardian's piece here. But again, there are forms of encryption that are truly affected. That's probably one of the best mixes, creative mixes of all media to tell a story in terms of visual journalism. From videos and text and interactives to little data uh, visualizations here about um, encryption. Absolutely wonderful. Um, Tomato Can Blues, another wonderful example from the New York Times that uses parallax scrolling to immerse you um, in the story. Uh, I encourage you, there's a lot of great new youthful young talent at the National Geographic right now who are doing some amazing things, redesigning and turning visual journalism on its head. Um, pay attention to the Geographic, watch what they're doing, use their examples in class. This one on the Serengeti Lions is an absolutely wonderful example of non-linear immersive video storytelling. Some amazing stuff there. So, back into it. Um, I don't value skill and technique when I teach as much as I value creative approach. Um, creative approach and a creative mind and creative thinking is what's more important to me. When I teach my students design, and I do, and I'll, I'll show you one great design a lesson that I give them, I tell them, I'm not making you a designer, I'm making you a design thinker. I don't want you to be a photographer or a videographer. I want you to be a visual thinker, right? Thinking, creative problem solving, managing change. Those are all the things I care about. The creative idea and approach is much more important than focusing too much on the traditional skill of f-stops in videos. Those things are fine. They happen, and they will happen. But I like to focus more on the creative approach. Um, in the industry, right, we all, most of us in this room were that very sharp Swiss army knife. We did one thing really well. But we tend to teach our students and think we have to prepare our students like that big Swiss army knife, which actually exists, by the way. I don't know how very useful it would be, right? Which is why I use it in this example. It's like $800 or something. Um, but building and creating them more in tune with the other one that's real, with the USB stick in it, and just enough tools um, to make them effective storytellers in the digital age. These are the things I care about most. These are the things I tell them that I'm going to focus on. It's an unrelenting pursuit of practice. If they're not shooting every day, if you're not shooting every day, if you're not practicing with the tools every day, you are going to fall behind so quickly. It's not even going to be funny. Right? Unrelenting pursuit of practice. They also have no excuses. They can do it every day. They all have a visual journalism tool in their pocket. 
and they can practice and shoot and upload and share and practice every day. It's one of the steps to mastery. Creativity, problem solving. Oh my gosh, I have a big sign on my door that says, have you Googled it yet? And if they haven't, they can't come into my office. I mean, I'm not here to solve your problems. There is a whole wealth of information. And I tell them, do you know that what you have in your pocket, you have more access to information than Ronald Reagan did as president? I mean, that's astounding, right? And I'm like, don't come to me to solve your problems. See if you can solve them first on your own. Because when you leave here, right, I'm not going to be around to help you in some sense. And they go and they, they figure it out. If they, it, it's also one way to kind of clear your plate of all these students coming and asking you. Anyway, no. Um, right? Remix. Everything is a remix. Take the weight off their shoulders that they have to be innovative and create something new. There's nothing new. Every story's been done. Right? Have them watch, and, I, and I'll give you a reading list of everything I make them watch. One of the things everybody must watch in here, if you haven't, is Everything is a Remix, created by Kirby Ferguson, a four-part series, all my students, required watching. Right? It's absolutely wonderful, this idea of remixing. And like I said earlier, you're not this. You're a thinker, a visual thinker, a design thinker. Not a videographer, not a reporter, not a writer. Well, reporter, of course, a reporter, always a reporter. right? But I'd rather have you be a problem-solving um, reporter right, with a creative approach and knows how to manage change. Those of us who are in the industry, I was in it for 25 years. I'm arguably still in it. And there were times where things didn't change at all. I went like five, 10 years, same kind of camera, same kind of boom. It was awesome. Now, students and people out there today, the rug gets pulled out from under them every five minutes. It's a new approach, it's a new tool, it's a new platform, it's a new something. They need to know how to manage that change. And I'll give you one, one little recipe, one little something I think helps them manage all that, right? So I, I think it said something to my thing like, he's gonna talk about the future. Boy, if I knew what the future was, I certainly wouldn't be at the University of California, Berkeley. I would be elsewhere making lots and lots of money, I'm sure, if I knew what the future was. But. This is what I know. I know one thing, and I know you all know this, but I think it's worth repeating. When I was a young kid watching this show, there's no way in hell I thought that that thing in Uhura's ear would ever be possible, or, or Kirk's communicator, ever. They were just toys I could play with, right? And now look at the world, right? This is everyday life, right? So Star Trek, that's where we start, right? Just to show you I have some science, somebody has deemed me, like all my science is solid, right? right? So here, right, we have, remember Minority Report? No way, oh my gosh, moving all this stuff around the wall. I mean, now that's what we do on our phone, right? And th there's a fingerprint, that's crazy, you guys. You guys know, that. You're all, a lot of you are shaking your head because you're, you're, you're my age and you're like, oh, this is astounding, it's amazing, right? The people behind us don't because that's what they grew up with. That's absolutely fine. But, but, but follow along. We're almost there, right? Longevity. This is, this is the point here, right? Why do some things last? And notice the three things at the bottom. The Beatles. Why does my 16-year-old still love these guys, right? Why will Star I love Star Wars. Hugest fan in the world. You know they only made three of them, and they, they're, they're only three. Um, but <laughs> it still goes on, right? It still goes on, right? But look at the other one, the journalist, the storyteller, right? Now, just follow along. I know, I know. It's the greatest example in the world, though, right? Battlestar Galactica, OK? Now, for those of you who don't know this show, let me give you a quick recap. I went to the wiki page, get it right down for you, right? Listen, there are only, when the show starts, 48,000 human beings left in the world. Some robot explode who God knows what, right? But only, think about this, only 48,000 people. And as the show goes on, more of these Cylons start killing people so that by the end of the show, I mean, there's less than 40,000 people. Think about this, 40,000 people left in the world. Now I wanna show you one quick clip from the show and see if you can get my point here. Ragtag fleet of ships following the Galactica through space, everyone. Cylons look like us now. And now they think Boomer's a Cylon. A reporter named Deanna Beers boards Galactica to interview people. Guess who's a Cylon? Okay, wait a minute. There's less than 40,000 people left in the world, and yet there's still reporters and there's still press conferences. And look at them, all of them holding their little one device, right? This thing. Right? And, and it's a whole room like this big of reporters, right? But, 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 but. Minority Report got it right. Star Trek got it right. 
right? And I think Battlestar Galactica, Hollywood always gets it right. They're always ahead of the curve. And I think if we follow their lead, we can be very secure, very secure in the idea that the world, which most of you know, will always need storytellers. We'll, they will, they'll always need us no matter what happens, right? And that gives me comfort, right? But this, now they spun off that show into some other show called Caprica, blah, 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 blah. But you know that Ahura moment that, that I was talking about? This is your Ahura moment, right? I'm 42, 43, maybe I'm 45, I've stopped counting, but I'm in my mid-40s, somewhere around there. And I never thought I'd have one of those moments. Now watch this. You're all gonna look at this and you're gonna go, never. Okay, watch. <gasps> Disposable technology that's like paper that you could do something and then throw it away. Never, right? Never. And you think the next slide is going to be, but it's here. It's not. I'm just, but you know, one day, right? <laughs> one day, I'm sure it will happen in our lifetime, right? I'm sure it will happen. Amazing things are happening out there. But this is what I truly believe. I believe it for my students. I believe it for you. That inside all of us is a visual storytelling, storyteller waiting to emerge, right? It, to, to see pictures in our mind, to have tools to create uh, images for people um, is a powerful, powerful thing. And I think that that is within all of us. Um, I show my students this at the beginning of class. I said, you know, all, now there's, we're all, you know, there's all these kinds of signs, don't leave your belongings unattended, all this kind of stuff. And I say, do this, right? Don't leave your longings unattended, right? Don't leave your longings unattended. Every time you see that sign, think about that, right? Make stories that won't go away and make your mark on them as only you can, right? Especially in visual journalism. Every masterpiece starts with a single brush stroke, right? Every time somebody has to take one small step in the direction of creating a picture and thinking about photography or thinking about information and color palettes and design and how you're going to tell a story on a platform that has no rules and where the doors of creativity are blown wide open and you can do anything you want and there's endless inspiration. But don't let that impede you. Take that first step, right? The edge, this is, this is what I think, right? The secret sauce to mastery is not waiting for uh, perfection, but just start where you are with reckless abandon. I tell them, life balance, there's no such thing as life balance. That's overrated, right? Just go down the rabbit hole, right? Stay down there for a while. Don't emerge, right? Like health services, like, no, don't tell them that. Don't tell them that. But I'm like, no, you have to. You have to absorb yourself. You have to envelop yourself in all of this stuff for an amount of time where all you're seeing and reading and doing and looking at revolves around your passion for whatever it is, visual journalism, data, interactives, et cetera, et cetera, reckless abandon, right? In and out. People like to come up to me all the time after class or after I give a presentation, give me all the negative things about the journalism industry and all the negative things about economic models and all the negative things about examples and all the, and I'm like, are you in or are you out? Are you in? I'm in. I know that when they bury me, they will, they will bury me in my casket with whatever uh, visual recording device of the day is right here on my chest. I know I'm in, and I know I'm going to be doing this until the day I die. I'm in, so all those things are secondary to me. It's not that I don't worry about them. It's not if I, I'm not being entrepreneurial about them. If I have some great entrepreneurial idea for uh, uh, creating revenue, I'll certainly bring it up and try it. But for me, there's no, I'm a, as you can tell, I'm a glass half full kind of guy. There's no room for the negativity to prevent me from doing what I want to do. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in 100%. So I have to go with the flow, I'm in the river, right? I have to go with it. So you're in or you're out. And those of you who are a little afraid, look, there's some tools that'll make you feel better. You can put an old flash on your iPhone, you know, you can grit. And I'm not even kidding. There, we have a professor, God bless her, who was so anti-technology and so moving towards the future. And I, as a joke, as a joke, brought in my iPad with this typewriter app on it, where if you use it, you start typing. It sounds like a typewriter. It's like, it's amazing, right? And I put it in front of her and she did like a few strokes. No joke, no exaggeration. Next day, she had an iPad. I'm like, <laughs> I know this can work, right? There is an app for everything, right? Okay, PG-13, right? 
This is what I care about more than anything. And, and there's going to be a point to this slide. The four letter word is form, right? That's where we have the opportunity to change, to experiment, and to play. If nothing comes of it, it's OK. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the old way we used to do things. That's absolutely fine. But we cannot miss this opportunity to think about this new creative platform, right? So this is what I'm most concerned or uh, inspired by. What can story be? What can it be, right? I want you to look at this. I think that this story could not have ever been told this way without the web and what, without some creative thinking. And another great example of looking outside of journalism and then stealing the ideas, borrowing, honoring, whatever you want to word, use the word, right? These things. Now, this is called the Johnny Cash Project. Absolutely love, love Johnny Cash. When he passed, I was online, forums, doing all this stuff, and I came across this project where uh, uh, somebody put together a project where they took Johnny Cash's last video that he ever recorded, they put it up on the internet, they allowed the world to draw any frame they wanted, they created a little tool where they could draw the frame. They put all those frames out there, and then they ran the video together, each frame drawn by a different person. And then certain frames, 100,000 people would draw. Well, which one gets surfaced to the top? Guess what? We get to vote on it. And when I showed this to my class three months ago, it's going to be different than when I show it to you today. Something that absolutely could not have been possible before the internet. It's an absolutely wonderful, inspiring little interactive. And not only do you get to see that happen, you can go in and watch. It will play back the drawings that people made. Oh yeah, turn the sound up. You gotta hear some Johnny in the morning. There ain't no grave. Right? And look at all those frames people drew. And you can go and you can explore them. And then you can watch them. You can watch them draw them back. And then you can vote them up. Think about all of the layers to this. Deconstruct this project in your mind for just a few minutes. And you'll see how powerful it is. And then put this in front of your students and say, now come back with an emotive, contextual news story that uses technology in this way. Then we're talking. right? Absolutely wonderful project, right? The ancient art of storytelling is in need of some modern clothing. That's all, right? Nothing's wrong with the skeleton. Nothing's wrong with the skin. But like, you know, storytelling's walking around with hot pants and leg warmers and, you know, probably uh, even looks worse than that, right? Now, when I win the Nobel Peace Prize, you guys will say you heard it first, right? I have a little formula. And this is the formula that proves that new narratives, new ways of storytelling are inevitable. Because when you put the K, which is knowledge, right? Access to knowledge together with information and technology, right? All of these together create the N. This is my kitten formula, right? Which is that new, new forms of narratives will emerge once all of these things are added up together, right? There's a wonderful storyteller on the other side of the pond, as they say. If you don't know him, you should follow him and his work. His uh, stuff is absolutely required reading for all the students at the Graduate School of Journalism. And I'll show you, I'll, I'll give you links to that. I'll show you what they are. But he said this in a blog post um, that is also required reading that I think is absolutely worth looking at, although I know the rule of never put too much text on a screen, right? But why, why with all of these styles and formats that were created for films and television, why in the world do we think they should work on a new platform? This is not shovelware. We don't shovel things that we've created um, for a legacy platform onto a new platform. We should be thinking about how to leverage the new platform, right? As Adam says, I'm not saying we should stop doing online video. I'm wondering, and I'm also wondering, and I think that you're wondering, or you should be wondering, and your students should be wondering, is there a whole new medium waiting to be invented, even beyond the ones we think we know exist, right? That's, that's to me, right? It's, the inner, it's just a baby. It's so tiny, right? I mean, I was still a, a, a relatively young guy when it was born, and you know, commercially in, in the mid-'90s, right, when we actually started to get on there and create things. So we have the opportunity, much like a teammate. It's not, maybe not quite a teen. In my mind, it's more 9 or 10 in terms of its, uh, you know, not its true age, but like its mental age, right? 
Um, and I think you still have opportunity. Those of you with, 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 with children uh, or young loved ones around you know that you, know, you tell them the right things, you lead them in the right direction, you can have some effect over uh, what they become as an adult. I think that's the opportunity that we have in terms of the way that stories are and should and will be presented um, in the future, right? This is what I want to do. I want to be a journalist that thrives as technology gets faster, right? But that's the kind of journalist I want to create and that I think needs to be created. And that kind of mantra, that motto was never, never n n uh, not anything that was present in my education right, in preparing me for something that would be so ground, uh, sh the, sh the ground would be shifting constantly beneath their feet, right, in approach and everything. We know the foundation. We do it well. Don't, do, not, do not forget that we know how to tell stories and teach the foundations of story. We know that and we do that well and we need to continue to do that. And those programs and classes um, should not in any way um, be uh, underneath these new skill-based, all of this forward-thinking new stuff, right? Because all of that stuff ultimately will be wiped away and will be something new. The thing that's most important is story and reporting, teaching people how to report, right? But we know that. We've been doing that for a long time. And some of you sitting here have illustrious careers in doing that. We have to make sure that's still a critical part of what we teach as we put them out into the world because technology will change, right? One quick example of what one of our students is doing with all of this kind of knowledge. Um, uh, she, she literally, literally, uh, uh, very creative, but she found her way into my office and stole, but stole is kind of a harsh word, my Google Glass from my desk. It's kind of there and I kind of say they can use it. She got in and she took it to India, okay, over break. And she said, I gotta do this, I, I, there's this project I wanna do and I've gotta do this uh, project and here's, here's Avni in India with, with my Google Glass on. And I'm gonna show you a little trailer of what she put together. And Avni was very concerned about the sexual harassment that's happening to women in, on public transportation in India. And she wanted to use Google Glass and she did and she's in the process of putting it all together now of with a pers from the perspective of Google Glass and a woman taking all of these forms of transportation, seeing what's happening, and then in a sense, although it's a, 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 a difficult word to use with this kind of topic, but gamify in some sense the experience. Allow people to choose what they want to do. And oh, you don't have enough money for that. You've got to take the train. You've got to do this. You've got to get here in time. And that's the kind of interactive that she's building. And glass and the use of glass uh, video from that perspective is absolutely astounding. I looked at it and it was just really amazing. But I, I just want to show, this is her, her uh, quick trailer for, uh, for her piece that she'll be putting out for her master's project. No, not all of Hindi it. That as soon as a girl child is born, anything that looks like a it's delivery a first may person perspective. In the house of her father. But her funeral will always take place in the house of her husband. Glass. This is always being talked Glass. about. Women, safety, Glass. gender, patriarchy. What, what, what does it mean to be a woman? What is the change that we are looking for? What is safety? What does it mean, all of this? This is being spoken of all the time. And the thing that's changed now is that we are threatening to do something about it. The rates of crime against women in Delhi is, is, is ridiculously high. So here's the great thing about this project, right? Story, foundation, creative approach. Um, if you don't know Clint, you should know Clint, and not Clint Eastwood, the story platform creation 
um, platform called Clint, K-L-Y-N-T. They just had a, 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 an upgrade recently. It's absolutely mind-blowing what a student can do. They can create interactive, immersive video experiences basically with a drag and drop interface that looks much like the nonlinear editors they're already um, creating with. I don't have, of course, don't have any stock or stake in, in any of this um, other than I was one of the first people um, to use it. Uh, I got a beta of it and it's been growing and exploding. It's wonderful. Academically, uh, it's not that expensive. It's about $500. Um, for a student, it's about 200 bucks, and they've given me some discount code, so if anybody is really interested in, in purchasing Clint for their newsroom or for some of their students, um, see me and I'd be happy to, to pass it along, but absolutely wonderful. I'm also gonna show some of the tools and things that I move my students towards using, right? So dig deep and share. The students wanna know how the sausage is made. They don't just wanna know um, how the camera works. They wanna know this. Right? They want to know that you're a worker. Well, well, yeah, by the way. Okay, there we go. Life of a project, right? See the dark night of the soul? They want to know that you go through that, that journalists go through that. They want to know that this isn't easy. And I share this with them all the time. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, after I shoot a project, there's two days where I don't want to see any of that footage. And then when I go back to that footage, I feel like a complete failure, like a fraud, like I can't uh, put this together, like it's going to fail, like it's going to suck. And I've been doing this for 25 years. And it's OK for you who's only been doing it for three months um, to feel the same way, if not more amplified, right? They need to know that, right? You've got to dig deep and you've got to share the, this kind of process with them, right? Um, this is every step of the way, every step I go through in terms of putting together any story. I'm talking about from the moment, my why, my intent, I go to my inspiration well, I do this, I do that. This is what I'm thinking about. You give it all to them. Let them process that information. It's one of the most hidden things that I often have not seen in classroom learning, which is that really, really deep, behind the scenes kind of process that happens. These, I buy these books for students, and I give them to them because I think they're that important. Um, I encourage you all, even personally, spend, it's $9. It, think of not going to Starbucks twice, right? And getting Steal Like an Artist, just that one. His, his new one, Show Your Work, is equally wonderful. Um, you know, the, anybody, anybody in here cringe at that idea of having the, to teach students, oh, personal branding and all that stuff, buy that book, another nine bucks, uh, nine bucks, it'll change your life, it'll change your perspective, it'll have you teaching in a different way. You'll be sharing these with your students as well, right? Notice this isn't like, you know, scrunk and whatever. This is like, this is stuff outside of, outside of the stuff we already do, right? So this is the reading list. Passionate Photographer is the book I wish I had written. It's focused around newspapers, it's focused around journalism, it's focused around what a visual person, be them a videographer or a photographer, in a traditional media organization like the New York Times or the Washington Post or something like that, um, feels and go th goes through and thinks about when putting together a photo essay, uh, editing pictures, all these kinds of things. It really is kind of a how the sausage is made mixed with wonderful creativity book. I don't recommend anything that I don't literally think that if my house was on fire, I would need to grab these books. Um, and, and I want to share these with you. Paul Arden's two books, one student got this the other day. She's like, where has this been my whole life? Wonderful, wonderful. Um, and some of this stuff is, is actually intended for, for business people but works so well for journalists and other creatives. Whatever you think, think the opposite, absolutely wonderful. If you're, oh my gosh, visual journalism, this is, this is the Bible right here, believe it or not. And think about it for one second. I mean, comics are, right, the first time we mixed beautifully art, illustration, words, pictures, pictures together on paper that juxtapose imagery left and right. They know what they're talking about. And they have, there are two chapters in here, I believe chapter seven and chapter five, that are absolute mandatory reading. These are the books that they have to buy, that they have to um, read. Articles inside the story magazine. Oh my gosh, absolutely wonderful. This is Adam Westbrook asking these same kinds of questions that I'm bringing up specifically around 
journalism. Absolutely wonderful. There's four deep, dark, really deep, wonderfully presented articles um, that you really, really have to um, experience inside the story magazine, right? Um, if you've got folks on iPads and such and you are teaching video, there is nothing better than this media storm field guide. Again, um, we are moving the, 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 first, um, the, the first few things to happen under my uh, uh, professorship there was that we, we lost all our desktop workstations and we went completely to um, laptops, which everybody freaked out about but now absolutely love and think it was the right choice. They wouldn't go as far as to require iPads or iPhones yet, but the, uh, about 80% of our students already have those things. This is required to have on their... Um, iPad, absolutely wonderful. This is the skill and technique thing. Um, microphone tests and 180 line and all of these kinds of things and building a sequence with really, really great, wonderful examples in the real world. So a wonderful one. This is the series I was talking to you about. Write that down. Everything is a remix. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful, inspirational little video series that a guy put together in his basement, kick-started, raised like a hundred million gazillion dollars. I don't know how people do it, but they do on Kickstarter and does this whole awesome series. Absolutely enlightening. And what it does is it lifts that burden off of all of us to think that we have to be so inventive and create something that's, you know, so entrepreneurial that the world has never seen it before. And the truth is we build off of and have been building off the backs of uh, women and men's ideas that have come before us for a very long time, and it's part of the process, right? Um, some tools, rack and tour, keep your eye on this. Oh, this is like silver bullet game changer kind of tool. Um, think After Effects, think um, Adobe Premiere, think of Clint, think of Dreamweaver, think of all these th things thrown together so that a creator, a storyteller, a student could go in with a creative vision and without any code, put together a really deeply immersive interactive. Much like Clint, this is newer, arguably, has some features that Clint doesn't have. It's uh, kind of in a, in a, in a, we've seen it, one of our students is building their master's project on it, so I've actually seen it and am uh, one of the first tools blown away by. I think they're gonna have a full release um, this summer, so keep your eye on that. Most of you, because it's a Knight-funded thing and, and something that comes around our industry, um, a good friend of mine, Zach Weiss, and the folks at Knight um, helped fund to put together Timeline JS. Most of you might know this. They also came out with a newer one, I think, is Story Map or something around maps, which is absolutely wonderful. We use. Um, I teach design. Des design. They went, you want to teach design? I'm like, oh my gosh. First of all, I don't care how good your story is. Um, you know, if you wrap a diamond in, you know, a, a, a newspaper, or that's not the right thing, you know, something that's kind of crappy and doesn't look so good, who's going to open it, right? But you could put something terrible in a blue Tiffany box and everybody would be like, oh my gosh, right? What we want to do is marry both things together so that the outside and the inside are equally beautiful. Um, but journalists have the worst design sense in the world, right? Almost, almost close to scientists, right? Like, oh my gosh, some of the stuff at the Berkeley, I'm like, how do you, uh, the, the science community, I'm like, how do you guys put this, you're using comic sans, and, like NASA's done, it's just terrible, right? Looks like the web in, you know, 19, circa 1993. Anyway, we teach design. Uh, helping them with design um, is a great, uh, this is a, a really great tool, there's another one. Uh, interactive, this isn't a design tool, another uh, interactive, immersive um, a tool called Project. I don't know why people can't spell things correctly, maybe because, because people have, have, have already bought all those domains. Visually, visual.ly, another wonderful um, tool that we have uh, students build um, data, um, visual uh, interactives for. Um, we're, 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 we're beginning to move towards a digital, um, Adobe digital publishing suite and designing interactive um, iPad um, magazines and content for both Android um, and um, Apple uh, using their tool, which is in conjunction with InDesign, which has been a great transition, uh, easy transition for us for some of the print magazines that we do publish as a school. But do not underestimate the power of iBooks author. I am so surprised more people do not do not know about this. It is free. The, of course, downside is that uh, all your content is only within the evil empire of Apple and can only be come from the store, but people have that stuff and, you know, 
Um, it's absolutely wonderful what students can do. Some people are uh, putting their master's project in, in here and they're absolutely wonderful. If you need some industry inspiration, the Pulitzer Center for Crisis Reporting does some great, beautiful guides using iBooks um, and th that they put together. Style tiles, man, you want an easy, nice, um, way to get students to start thinking about fonts and color palettes um, and graphics, just go download uh, style tiles, give them out to them, and give them an assignment, which I do something like this. You have to create a brand new newspaper, uh, show me what the logo and the headline would be, give me the fonts, what would it look like, build me some buttons, um, and build me a color palette, right? That's one design assignment. The other thing we use to great effect is we all, the whole school storyboards on Google presentations. It's the most wonderful creative way um, to share and openly create a, a, a storyboard. You can upload videos and pictures and what your script might be and what it might say um, and go all the way down. So everybody works on that. Um, WordPress, okay, you all know WordPress, that's, that's old news. Um, the X theme, just X theme from WordPress is, is, is part of a new wave of drag and drop, no code, do whatever you want um, with it kind of thing. You can create parallax scrolling narratives with a visual composer within WordPress using this theme. Something worth checking out. It's only about 40 bucks. Some of our students are using it uh, to build their master's projects. Um, all of our data viz uh, classes uh, teach D3. I'm not part of that uh, sequence, but I thought you guys might want to know. Storehouse is a great new iPad application for presenting um, information. Again, I'm going to start going uh, pretty quickly because I've only got a couple of minutes left, and these are going to uh, all be in the presentation. One of the biggest things I do, um, one of the things I get the most feedback on um, from students saying it's the most helpful in terms of learning visual journalism and taking it to the next step is this thing um, that I do, which is deep um, reverse engineering of pieces. And this is what I've done. And I encourage you to do the same. It's, it's, it's actually wonderfully enlightening and eye-opening. Find a piece of visual journalism. Doesn't matter whether it's a video or whatever it is. Um, and find out how long it is or how long you think a student might interact with it. And then create a Google form. And every 30 seconds or so, so this example is with a video, every 30 seconds I stop the video and I have the students rate whether they like it or hate it on a scale of one to 10. I've been doing this for about six years. Um, I've got hundreds and hundreds of responses. So at the end of a thousand more, I have all of this information in the Google form. I'm easily, um, looks something like this when it's done. And with a few clicks, I can create this story graph chart. And we come back next week and we begin to look at the highs and lows in this story Right, and, why, and then we deconstruct why, 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 where it dipped below seven, five, there's a huge dip in this piece, a thousand more, right there, around two minutes. What is it? What is it? Let's look, and let's talk about it, and let's deconstruct it. And then why does it go back up, right? So deeply, deeply deconstructing pieces of visual journalism and finding ways to do that are really, really important for students. They absolutely love it. Um, every, every story must be pitched via Google Form. There are questions here. That's in the download. You can see the questions that we ask for every story that we pitch. Um, Creative Commons is a huge, huge thing that I teach in visual journalism because they all think everything is free and they can use whatever they want. And you have to teach them, as you well know, that that's not the case. So teaching them good habits about where to get things when they have to create. Um, 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 a piece about uh, you know, uh, the anniversary of you know, the assassination of JFK, they know they can go here, they can go here, they can go here. I also make them create stories, pure creative commons. You have to create a two minute piece about whatever you want, only using creative commons, creative commons, um, audio, video, pictures, et cetera. Right? It's a great, great exercise. I make them watch a film called The War Photographer, and then I make them cut a trailer to it. Right? So this is kind of on the download because I'm probably not supposed to do that. But they, I give them all the film. Well, actually, we're educators. We can do this, right? I give them the film. I say, here it is. Cut a trailer. You will watch jaws drop and eyes pop open when they see their classmates who all, everybody got the same content, right? 
the same content and to see how other people cut a trailer and what they brought to it and their ideas. It's so inspiring to them, so inspiring. It's a wonderful thing. Here's the design, des uh, the design um, um, exercise I do. Some of you might be familiar with, right, how absolutely in terms of design and hierarchy of uh, 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 boarding passes, it's terrible. Right? Where am I supposed to go? What? Are, 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 right? Just give it to me the right way. I give them a blank sheet of paper, and I say, okay, with the idea of hierarchy, right? And all these things I teach them about design. Please redesign the boarding pass, right? So that it's a much better experience. That sets them up for creative interactives in new. See, I have to do turn this on, otherwise we're in trouble. Okay, I'm, almost, I'm, I am, I'm ending here, right? You get things back like, now that's a boarding pass I would like, right? That's a boarding pass that makes sense to me. Although Virgin America, they're beginning to do it. A lot of designers out in the real world, which this example is from, has done this thing from, uh, for them, right? When all is said and done, a lot more is said, right? You just sat on your butts for an hour and, and, and listened to me talk, then is done, right? And what I, remember there's no I in journalism. This comes, of course, from a photographer. Right, well, you can't spell. Um, we're all in it together, and we all must share and create together, share our assets, inspire each other, which is why I absolutely love to come to this conference, right? Uh, the future belongs to the, a few of us who are still willing to get our hands dirty, right? You're all getting your hands dirty. Um, and then you can already tell a little bit, a little bit of an Al Pacino, Star Wars science fiction freak. Um, you know, people are like, he wasn't a Jedi. I'm like, oh, well, let's talk later. Anyway, if you think of Jedi and Darth Vader, Right? And you drop that there, and this is still PG-13, right? That's what I tell my students. I say, just effing do it, right? Just shut up and shoot, basically, right? So um, have a great time. I look forward to talking with you. If you have any questions or anything, I'll be here um, throughout the conference. And thank you for letting me be um, the first uh, speaker today. Um, all right. <laughs> <laughs>